The disciple called Nicodemus of Bethany was in reality the son of Nicomedes the fourth of Bithynia. Joseph of Arimathea was in reality Joseph of Judea, an extremely wealthy tin merchant and descendant of King Zedekiah and Mattathias. The Virgin Mary of Bethany was in reality Mary of Bithynia and wife of her rich uncle Joseph of Judea. Mary Magdalene, Jesus of Nazareth, Thomas, and James were the wealthy royal offspring of Hebrew-Egyptian Ptolemy Queen Cleopatra VII. Why did the Bible alter and even omit key historical names and dates? To cover up the real Hebrew identities of the royal ruling families of Egypt and the Holy Roman Empire whose secret religion was and still is the cult of Amun. Why in the world did first century Jews living at the time of Jesus threaten to punish by death anyone who dared to copy, sculpt, or draw the face of Jesus and his graven image? What were they afraid of? Were they afraid perhaps he might be recognized for who he really was? <laughs> After the crucifixion, a Jewish rebellion against Roman rule broke out in Jerusalem. The Roman soldiers destroyed Solomon's temple, burned Jerusalem, and eventually renamed the land of Israel Palestine. The Hebrew tribes dispersed from the land of Israel and joined together into a ferocious force of brutal seafaring warriors. They named themselves after their six great ancestors the six Hebrew Hyksos kings who once ruled Egypt. The VI in their name, Vikings, is the Roman numeral for six, six kings. Dan was the largest tribe of Israel and the first to replace the god of Judaism with pagan fertility gods. The tribe of Dan became seafaring pirates, looting their way from Greece along the Mediterranean leaving evidence of their migration route. Like signposts, they incorporated the name of Dan into the names of mountains, towns, and rivers, like the mighty river Danube. They raided their way up the coast of Europe and built settlements in the British Isles and in Scandinavia. The country of Denmark literally means the mark of Dan. carvings of snakes and dragons on their ships, the red and white stripes on their sails, and archaeological relics reveal that the tribe of Dan became none other than the dreaded Vikings. The pagans arrived like stinging hornets and spreading on all sides like fearful wolves, robbed, tore, and slaughtered not only beasts of burden, but even priests and monks and nuns. They came to the church of Lindisfarne and destroyed everything, trampled and polluted the holy places, their mouths froth, their eyes stare, they howl like wild beasts. Joined by the Israeli tribe of Naphtali, they continued their reign of terror through the British Isles, accumulating massive amounts of wealth. Then the unthinkable happened. Their king, King Canute, was crowned King of England, Denmark, Norway, and Sweden in 1016 AD. And so the tribes of Israel had found a new homeland and the throne of Israel had found a new throne.
the throne of England. Danish royalty from the tribe of Dan intermarried and became related to almost all of the monarchies of Europe, including Queen Elizabeth of England. The bloodline of the tribe of Dan was firmly established in royal power circles. A unique Viking genetic disease called Dubitra's contracture, causing tightening of the tendons in the hand, give it a claw-like appearance. U.S. President Ronald Reagan and British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher contracted the Viking genetic disease and are believed to be descendants of the Vikings and thus descendants of the tribe of Dan. The media has misled the public into believing that Queen Elizabeth II is a symbolic ceremonial figurehead with little or no real power, that she is a cold but harmless old relic who passes her time sipping tea at the palace. Nothing could be further from the truth. As British monarch, Queen Elizabeth II is the wealthiest, most powerful person on earth. She embodies the crown and supreme world power. Presidents of the United States are forbidden any title of nobility and are subservient to the monarch. The U.S. President is Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces based at Camp David, which is known to insiders as Camp King David. Prime Ministers in Commonwealth nations like Canada and Australia are also subservient representatives of the British King or Queen. They are her spokesmen. The Governor-Generals of the Queen's Commonwealth nations represent and exercise the Queen's power on her behalf. What the general public doesn't realize is that their leaders are only representatives of the monarch and do not possess the power. They exercise the power. They do not reign, they rule. The monarch, on the other hand, reigns but does not rule, possesses the power but does not exercise it. By delegating her powers instead of exercising her powers, the Queen is left safely outside and above the conflicts and divisions of the political process. She is protected from becoming a target of political hostilities. Meanwhile, the general public is kept in the dark about the true powers that the Queen actually possesses, powers that she delegates but has not yet chosen to exercise. So what exactly are these powers that the Queen possesses but has not chosen to exercise? Her powers include the power to choose the Prime Minister and to dismiss the Prime Minister through her Governor General, the power to dismiss ministers and the government, the power to dissolve Parliament and call new elections, the power to refuse legislation passed by Parliament, the power to command the armed forces and raise a personal militia, she has the power to read confidential government documents and intelligence reports, the power to declare a state of emergency and issue proclamations. She has the power to call elections and enact laws in Her Majesty's name. Few people realize that not a single law is passed without the Queen's consent. She has the power to exercise Crown prerogatives, which means the Queen can declare war through her Prime Minister without even the agreement of Parliament. She has the power to grant and bestow titles and honors like Sir, the power to pardon convicted criminals. So why has the Queen been allowed to legally possess all of these supreme powers? For the sake of tradition? What exactly is the meaning of the term the Crown? The Crown is defined as executive powers exercised in the name of the monarch. The actual Crown itself worn by the monarch is a symbol of the Queen's executive powers. The Parliamentary Oaths Act of 1866 requires all leaders of 54 Commonwealth nations to swear an oath of loyalty to the Queen, not to the people who elected them. I swear by Almighty God that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, her heirs and successors according to law, so help me God. 
those who do not swear allegiance to the Queen are deemed unfit for office, including the Prime Minister, police, military, judges, legislators, lawyers, and public servants. New citizens to the Queen's Commonwealth nations must swear allegiance to Her Majesty the Queen. Public land in the Queen's colonies like Canada is called Crown Land and includes Aboriginal land. Government corporations are called Crown Corporations. The Central Bank of Canada and the Canadian Mint are Crown Corporations independent of most government controls. Neither Canada nor Australia, two huge and independent countries in their own right, has dispensed with her services as their head of state. Forms, stationery and printing are printed by the Queen's printer. Canadian warships are...